The G20 summit went down last week, and that is a meeting of the 20 richest nations in the world and the EU. And during one of the meetings, which is supposed to be attended by the heads of state, the President Donald Trump had to leave. And who took his place? But let's see the photo. In the middle there, flanked by Theresa May and Xi Jinping, is Ivanka Trump. Now, some people are a little upset about this. They're retweeting a Russian person's photo. Ivanka Trump, unelected, unqualified daughter in chief, is representing the US at the G20 summit next to May, Xi Merkel. And Alana Lukash is the person who um, tweeted that. So, uh, some people are upset saying this is a group of the 20 most powerful leaders in the world in the 20 most powerful countries in the world. It conveys that, that impression and we are a democracy and that's also important here. Um, he's, uh, this is actually from an ambassador named Nicholas Burns who was an ambassador under Bill Clinton and George W. Bush said it stuck out. Uh, the very fact that his daughter is senior advisor smacks of the kind of nepotism not seen since JFK named Robert F. Kennedy as Attorney General. Um, this is not the first time that she sat in or other members of her of his family who are not elected officials or appointed officials in the conventional sense. Um, Jared Kushner and Ivanka sat in with Chancellor Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel uh, and Kushner sat in in a meeting with President uh, Peña Nieto of Mexico. So this happens a lot. What are your thoughts? Five words or less. Daddy's little princess. <laughs> Nepotism reaching a summit. OMG 20. OMG 20. So yeah, what do you think? What do you think of this? Because it is his daughter. This is not the Secretary of State mm -hmm. who I would imagine someone could sit in. But Angela Merkel said it's just someone from the delegation. And when the president can't be there, you just send someone from the delegation. Ivanka was in the delegation. Thoughts. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing is my favorite quote from Trump is like, you know, people give Ivanka a hard time because she's my daughter. If she wasn't my daughter, like they wouldn't be giving her this hard time. That might be the toughest thing for her. No, she wouldn't be in this position if she wasn't your daughter. The reason she's in this position is because she's your daughter and you're just, you know, perpetuating nepotism. And the fact is, is that a lot of times he's saying that he wants to run his country, run the country like a business. And our country isn't a business. And in a business, you can, you know, perpetuate nepotism and have your, you know, kid or who whomever in your family sort of rise the ranks and fill in for daddy. But that doesn't really work when you work in a democracy. But I don't think they get that. I mean, it could work. It's just one of those things where you look at, this is a summit, everybody's looking at you. And these are countries that have kind of pulled like England. England does have a, a nepotistic, nepotistic system, which is their royal family, but they're just heads of state, not heads of government. Like they hand the government off to the people who don't do that stuff. It right. seems like we're trying to make America more like England by doing this. And just one more thing is to your point, yeah, she's only there because she's his daughter, which means like there is someone more qualified out there that could have this position. And the only reason that person doesn't have this position is because that person isn't your daughter. Yeah. Okay, so while I agree with you guys, I would like to point out that what they were saying in defense of Ivanka Trump being there was that apparently at this point in time in the discussion, they were talking about empowering women in Africa mm -hmm. and they felt that she had some sort of business expertise to do that. That being said, um, I don't think that this was appropriate. I also think that it was really childish that this morning, did you guys see that Donald Trump went after Chelsea Clinton on Twitter and basically said he saw the backlash of news programs, not unlike this one, saying that, um, you you know, it was really inappropriate that Ivanka was there and you know, she's not qualified, blah, blah, blah. And then he tweeted out something to the effect of, uh, would they be saying this if Chelsea Clinton was there? Like, I bet they'd have no problem if it was if Chelsea Clinton was there. And it's like, no, dude, you're missing, stop, you're, you're missing yeah, the whole point. And stop move. bringing up the Clintons. Stop bringing nothing, up the Clintons. It wasn't, the Clintons had nothing to do with you saying that Ivanka could sit at the G20 summit. It's missing the point. I think people would still be upset, but also like Chelsea Clinton has a degree in international relations. She's not a and Chelsea Clinton, fashionista, which is nothing wrong. With Ivanka's business, that's amazing. But at least Chelsea Clinton's like a little bit more qualified. And Chelsea Clinton responded to Donald Trump's tweet saying, "Mr. President, neither my mother nor my father would have ever asked me. Like I would never have been in that position." That's it. There's a little bit of a smackdown that you guys want to get in that spicy Twitter feud, Chelsea mm. Clinton v. Donald Trump. Yeah, Elizabeth Spires wrote, "The G20 is not take your daughter to work day." I love that. But then Donald Trump Jr. tweeted, "If the left is so outraged about Ivanka sitting in for a few minutes, maybe they'd be happier if I sub in." 
in for a while, let me know. Like that doesn't make any sense. No, it wouldn't make anyone saying, happier. Like, oh, but like, okay, she's like sucks, but I wear suck more, so like, choose your poison. Yeah, like, it's like that's I'm, I'm super He's pathetic. He's like, we have other siblings. Would you have been happier with <laughs> other siblings? If it was <laughs> Tiffany and she released another song at the G20, would you have been happy then? Like you're missing the point. We just want qualified <laughs> delegates. That's yeah. all we're asking for. Yeah, it's just, I, have no, I, I don't have any like, in. Inherent problem with her sitting in at this meeting. It's like a long thing. It's a long day. It's been a whole yeah. week of this stuff. If there's a moment where he has to get up, but it is like this very strange thing. And I get it. Like he does want to run the company, the country. I don't know if he wants to run it like his business. It's just that that's his experience. And one of the reasons that he's there is because a lot of people say that he's different from your average politician. And a lot of folks on the left are, are trying to say like, it's not normal. And that, I, don't, I just don't think that's enough to say that it's abnormal yeah. and it's unconventional because that could be, a, that's a paraphrasing why he has the job in the first place. It's just that it just smells so much like a strange dictatorship to mm -hmm. just put your family in there. Why the hell wouldn't you? Why, why is this the time to do stuff like and that? And Ivanka sitting in at the G20 summit is just a symptom of a larger problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's all getting under our skin. It's not just that she's sitting there. It's like, oh my gosh, his circle is so insular. His, you know, the people who are his aides who are giving him advice, like we know the, who these people are and we know what they stand for and they, they don't listen to a big portion of the country. And that's what the problem is, is that right. he's not bringing in other sort of, there's no pluralism right, that's in his thing. cabinet. It's like he's an outsider. And so as an outsider that you you could hopefully expect that he would do something refreshing mm -hmm. like and he is doing stuff different but it, it's never that the one person that he surprises you with is like refreshingly bipartisan. Yeah. yeah. It's always either the worst person for the mm -hmm. job by definition, like someone who runs the EPA who is currently suing the EPA 14 different times or a member of his family. Right. It's never like that refreshing new breath of fresh air. Again, yeah, I think that's what it is. I mean, like I'm okay with him not, you know, doing politics as usual. I think that's okay and I think that's something that mm -hmm. we need to pursue in general. But I think like if Ivanka was elected into this position or if she was qualified for, for this position, we would be okay with it. I think we would be more accepting of it. But I think the problem is is that he's draining the swamp essentially with just like a new swamp, a half of which is just his family. Right. And that's not how this country works. The swamp I, of oligarchical nepotism. Yeah, I hear you guys, we want refreshment and I know that that refreshment is Tiffany Trump. Tiffany Trump, 2016. Please sit. 20, yeah. 20, 2016. Whatever. We don't know, but 20. Tiffany Trump, G20 <laughs> Summit.